there, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, today I'm actually going to do the part of my video series where I'm showing you how I'm putting the design on the wine glass. This is a 20 ounce white wine glass and this is the flower that I posted the video earlier this week and I want to just go ahead and proceed with showing you how I went ahead and placed it on the wine glass or painted it on the wine glass I should say. On this one I did go ahead and I painted the stem too just to finish it off and I think it turned out really nicely. I think they're very pretty. Just in the comments below if you'd let me know what you're thinking and how you like it I would appreciate it. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Brushes that I'm using tonight are going to be the one stroke three quarter inch flat brush, the number 12 flat brush, and then a, I'm not sure what the size of this round brush is, but it was a one stroke glass painting brush. I would say because it's pretty large that it was probably the three quarter size. And then one of my favorite brushes, the Glass Art by Dynasty, the number 71, it's a 3 8 inch. I guess you would consider this a flat brush, but it's one that I use when I'm actually base painting um, more of a solid color and not doing stroke work. I like these brushes because the coverage is just phenomenal. Paint I'm using tonight, my favorite, Paradell, which is a multi-gloss paint. I will be using, I'm like I put my paint all the way here, the Wicker White, also one of my go-to's, the Perfect Purple, but I'm actually using the, just the gloss paint. I finally figured it out, I moved it, moved it to a different spot. School Bus Yellow will help me finish off the center of the flower. This is the perfect purple. I am doing it in the, the Folk Art Enamel. And then the Thicket Green, which is my other favorite when I'm doing leaves. So we will go ahead and get started with putting the actual flower petals on the glass. On this one I'm going to have two of the, the main, the bigger glass, or I'm sorry, the bigger petals and then just a couple kind of more buds, bud type uh, petals on the side of one of those and then some filler, filler leaves that go in. Color that I'm using for the flower petals is the Perfect Purple and the Wicker White. And I had somebody make a comment about it being hard for me, to, for them to see my stroke work. Um, I will do the best that I can to try to make sure that you're able to see it. And this is just the basic stroke where you're kind of weaving it in and out, back and forth. It's kind of like you're washing something. Like scrub those floors, scrub those floors. Woo! Okay. And you can get back, go back over it just to make it more more opaque. As you know, if you watch my videos, I do like my gloss work to be more opaque looking. And before I started painting this, I did actually wash the glass. That's something that's really very important when you're painting glass, that you make sure you do wash your glass before you start painting on it. If you, you can do both, both wash your glass and then go over it with denatured alcohol, rubbing alcohol. If you want to, just make sure that you get all the fingerprints and all that good stuff off of it. Alright, so here we go with, with painting this petal. And I'm trying to make sure that you can actually see what I'm doing. And then I'll go back over it. It's always a pain when you're a left-hander, though, when it comes to writing, painting, anything else. You kind of have to do it the opposite direction of somebody else and how they did their work because you're left-handed. 
And if you're not left-handed, you probably won't completely understand that. But basically, your, your hand seems to get in the way of everything you do. I don't know why that is. Go back over this. So I'm just basically kind of doing like a just a, a little slight roll there. And then I can come down and then continue on with my flower bud. Then I'm going to go back over it here and just kind of do a little bit of a part in front there. Really using both the same strokes really. Alright. And then on this next one, I am going to kind of just do a, a smaller version of the big one. Just do a couple, couple leaves like that. Or petals, I should say, not leaves. I get back over this to make sure I'm putting some more white in there. And then go back over it. And then kind of do the... Now you could actually go to a smaller brush, which in all honesty I probably should do because of the size of this flower. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it as the, the size that I'm already using. Just going to wipe this off a little bit, make it a little bit neater there. All right, so we're going to have the big flower, a couple little samples of buds, and then another complete. Now, if you wanted to have some flowers in between it, because typically I like to not necessarily have two of the big ones right next to each other, but with the filler flowers and all, I think it's fine. Okay, again, we're going over this. Now, as I mentioned before with me being left-handed, you may find yourself having to go the opposite direction when you're creating your designs. If you're trying to do anything like I'm doing, just for the mere fact that I am left-handed, so a lot of times I have to do it the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. So basically, if you start to the right, I might start to the left of creating a, a design. If I start to the right, you might start to the left. And if you're somebody that can use either hand, then you'll have to figure that out. <laughs> you're on your own. You're on your own for that one. And again, on this part, I could actually use a smaller brush but I'm just going to stick with it for the purpose of this video. I'm just sticking with the brush I've been using. Okay. Hopefully you can see these. If you still can't, I'm really trying to be cautious of it. If you really can't still, then let me know. And I'll try to continue to do some adjusting on it. Like for you to be able to see what I'm doing, so I apologize if if it's if you can't see with my hand in the way. And this is a design too that you can easily do same night, having girls over to have a girls' night out, get a couple wine glasses for each person, and then let them go to town. Let them be able to create their own and go home from your house with some pretty wine glasses. Alright, now on this I am just going to do some easy little stems. These I'm oops, not too happy with because I really like them to be a little bit more opaque. And I probably could use my other brushes for that purpose. I'm going to go ahead and just continue on with what I'm using here. Um, if you want to go back over your stems, if you're finding that those are too light for you, 
or you're concerned about the, the durability of them, uh, then of course by all means you know, go back over them. And I'm also, these are not gloss brushes that I'm using right now. So you might find better durability if you're actually using gloss painting brushes. Maybe it would go on a little thicker. And you could also add some white in it. White has is, has more, um, I don't want to say volume to it, but more the pigment. So it has a tendency to you know be a little bit thicker when you're applying it to applying it to the glass. And like I said, that's where with my special brushes that I like to use that I might get a better result from those. But again, this is just for the purpose of doing this video. I'm not too picky about it. Another thing I need to remind you and I like to try to remind people is that uh, when they're baking their glass, make sure that you're placing it into a cold oven. Preheat, then add your bake time to the preheat time. And you'll see really good results with that. If you're just putting it into a hot oven, you're at risk of the glass breaking. And I really don't think, after you put some hard work into your work, your designs and all, you don't want to see them break. You want to be able to use them, right? So definitely make sure that you Like I said, it's an easy design. You'll find a lot of these are that I'm doing are fairly simple uh, strokes and that they're easy to do. Like with what I'm doing right now, it's just simple. Load your brush with the two different colors, put it on and just kind of wiggle your brush. Pretty simple. Simple, simple, simple. Alright, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch over to my 12 flat brush and then add in some more leaves with this. And again, these were coming out too kind of thin. So I'm not sure how happy I am with those two. And I don't know if it's because I'm using the metallic paint with it. You might want to switch to something that is, I'm sorry, it looks like I'm getting off the, and I'm just basically wiggling it. Double loading the brush and then just placing the color in the same direction. This is where like base coating the glass can help with the durability of the paint because it'll be thicker. That's one reason like a lot of my glassware you're seeing me now, you know, whether I painted a back background or, uh, you know, whatnot, it doesn't really matter what color it is. Hopefully you can see this. Please let me know if you can't. I'd love to see pictures of, of your glass painting. If you're attempting it or somebody that actually does glass painting, I would love to see, see your work. You know, feel free to share photos down below. If you like my videos, please make sure you do give me a big thumbs up. And if you would share my videos, I would appreciate that.
And once again, you, know, you can go back over these leaves or any of the vining if you feel like it's too thin. Definitely feel free to do that. Go back over it. If you want to let it allow it to dry, that's fine. You want to just allow it a little bit of drying time and then go back over it. That's fine too. And then I like to just go back over just to kind of clean it up. Go back over the vine or the stem of the flower. Like I just did there. I'll do that on this one too. Alright, just continuing on here. Just a few more to look to go. This is just a real simple leaf too. It's basically doing a little bit of the wiggling and the paint. So you really can't see it as well with the um, transparency of the paint right now with this. But I'm basically wiggling it on, coming back with the same colors and then wiggling them on in the same direction where a lot of times we'll reverse we'll keep the outsides of the, of the of leaf all the same color as opposed to having the same color in the same direction if that makes sense. I'm going to add just one more here and again I'm just putting it on and wiggling it Okay, that I went over another leaf. Perfectly okay. And like I said, hopefully you can see this, see what I'm doing. And I'm going to go back over the stem just to kind of clean it up. And then up here, for this little itty bitty, I'm going to just do some basic kind of one strokey kind of leaves. It's pretty easy, simple. You leave it like that, or you can add another one in if you want. And hopefully, you remember what I've told you before. What I say all the time is, if you're going to be selling your glassware. Make sure that you let people know no two will be alike. No two will be alike. That's something hard to remember when you're doing something that's handmade. It's Unless you're using a stencil of some sort, it's just not going to be the same. Just not going to be. Now for the center of the flower, what I'm doing is combining on the round brush a little bit of the thicket and the peridot and then just kind of tapping it on. I will just keep turning the glass and tap it on as I'm turning it. Pretty simple and you can dot you know, do veining lines like I mentioned before when I was doing the the painted part on the black cardstock. You can do the vining, uh, you know, by putting little lines on the flower. For this, the purpose of this video, I'm not doing that. Once I do this, then I'll go back over it with the yellow school bus and just kind of tap some in. Definitely doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Nothing I do ever is. Nada. Nada, nada, nada. So don't forget though, if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe Hit the bell too so that you get notifications whenever I post something new. Give me a big thumbs up and I'd love to hear from you. Love comments. I will answer them as quickly as I can. 
I do babysit grandchildren and very uh, had a very crazy day with the monkeys. I call them circus monkeys. So they're just very, very busy. Very, um, I don't know how to say it, very strong-willed children, but awesome. A little prejudiced, but awesome. And today just happened to be a crazy day with them. I think part of it is because my husband stayed home. Grandpa was there, and they thought that was time to be crazy with Grandpa. It really wasn't time to be crazy with Grandpa because I drove Grandma crazy. <laughs> now you gotta love them. Gotta love the grandbabies. Okay, on this part I'm just drawing in some little little stems to place my filler leaves. I'm just going through here. Now see these are where the two big buds or big flowers are next to each other. I typically don't do that. Typically I would have a bud or something in between. But I was fine with it on this. So I'm just throwing the vining in. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm just going to be going through and adding the green. Green, the peridot, the thicket. I need some more thicket. Peridot thicket and then I will add some white wicker or wicker white. Of course I'm saying it backwards. Alright, so here we go. So just little quick little I'm gonna do point, tap, 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 just sporadically. It can go over the the flower petals. This just kind of fills in some of the open open areas in between the paintings. And then you can just kind of go back. Sorry, finding myself off the off the uh, video screen here. Let's go back in with some of the darker. You can go back in with the metallic. You can make this thicker in here if you wanted it. Main thing is to make sure that you can see it. You know, it's um you don't want the leaves to actually get kind of muddled or lost. And I'll throw some white in them. And they're pretty with the a little touch of white. It doesn't even have to be all of them. Just kind of sporadically touch them with white. Kind of clean them up a little bit. Maybe if you feel the need, you want to make them a little bit shinier again, go back through maybe and add add some more or add you know, fill them in more. So like that. Then I'm going to do the same, just kind of go here sporadically. I like to start towards the top, just come down. But you're just basically touching. If you want to do it with two colors on your brush. You can do that, or you can just go back in and add add more color to the petals, add more definition. And again, it's okay to go over the flower petals because you know in nature it, that that happens. I mean, you're you're it's not going to be perfect in nature, and you want it to kind of show movement too. Just very quick, very quick, very easy. As you can see, not not anything difficult. And if you want to add some more of the peridot, which is the metallic, just to get some shimmer, go back and do that. And then we're going to go to Turn it to the final one. And again, you can put two colors, three colors on your brush, however many you want. 
to be using. You're just touching and moving down the stem. Pretty easy. Love to hear if you like this design. If you think it's easy, if you paint it, I'd love to see what you came up with. As you know, even though you're watching somebody paint, yours is always going to be different. No two are going to be alike. Might be similar, but definitely not going to be identical because you're painting it by hand. All right, so I have all that in. This is what I've got so far. And then my final step is to take my little Dynasty brush and then I'm going to just basically start at the base of the of the wine glass and just keep turning it I'm trying to finish it off like that so I'm just touching right up here and then you can just do because I'm doing the two the peridot and the thicket together sorry I've got the screen so big that um, it's cutting off my viewing area but anyhow I'm doing the peridot plus the thicket green. When you're using this brush you can you know, go around it sideways if you want. It's kind of easier easier way to put it on and then if you want it to be give it a nicer finish then I go back around or as I'm doing it then I brush up, brush up. And I'll show you what I mean. So like say to get the paint actually on the stem, you can go around like this and do it. I'm sorry, I keep going up. And I'll go around the stem like this if you want to do it that way. And then come back through and then straighten it up like this. Where you're just doing you know, upward and, and downward motions just to kind of give it a nice finish. Or you can just paint it sideways. Now I've done that too, where I've taken like whites and greens and when I'm making it look like a stem and I just do sporadic, you know, touch and pull kind of little short little strokes and then it I leave it like that. It looks it looks neat. Now you'll find when you're gla you're painting glass though, you're gonna find your 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 way with it yourself. I mean by practicing, by trying different products, you are you more of somebody who's going to want to do character kind of glassware, um, personalized florals, animals. I've done animals and a lot of those. I mean it's really just there's so many so much subject matter that you can actually paint on a glass. It doesn't have to be limited to florals or stripes or what whatnot. My thing is always that anybody can paint it. There's some kind of design for everybody, no matter what your skill level is. And it can still be nice. It doesn't have to be like, oh my gosh, my second grader painted this or my kindergartner or whatnot. And of course, there's more detailed patterns to paint different skill levels. But I just think, you know, if you're somebody who likes to drink wine, I mean, there's all kinds of glasses. You don't have to just do wine glasses. And whatever your special drink is, you know, make a special glass to drink out of it. Make a special glass for every everybody that comes over to your house so that no two are alike and nobody gets their wine glasses mixed up. And how about that one? I mean, that would be nice instead of having to put charms around them so you don't forget where you set your glass. Yeah. Have hand painted ones for them to drink out of, and you'll be good to go. All right. Well, I believe that this is finished. Again, pretty simple. Doesn't take a ton of time to do. What you would do is allow the glass to cure for at least an hour. Place the glass, as I mentioned, into a cold oven. Turn it on. Add your bake time to the 
add your um, preheat time to the bake time. Make sure it cools completely before you pull out the glass and you should have a beautiful piece of artwork. Alright, so there you are. I'm going to try to hold it up here a little bit closer so you can see it. Alright, thanks again for stopping by and taking the time to view my video. I do appreciate it. If you have, again, have any questions, concerns, uh, comments, I'd love to hear comments down below. Let me know what your favorite wine glass is. If you have pictures of what you're actually uh, painting yourself, I'd love to see those. Um, just to share work, that's all. Pure and simple, just to show me what you've done. I think it's interesting to see other people's work too. Anyways, until the next video, have a good day. Bye.